So what's the best way to measure water in a 22,000 litre underboarded tank? Welcome to the second edition of Simon Says. Um, my home assistant platform talking about the way I've implemented my system at home here in New Zealand. Now, I live in a rural area and we don't get access to town water supply. So we've got these big water tanks, two 22,000 litre underground concrete water tanks with a pump and filter system, pushes the water back up to the house. And um, basically the water collected off the roof, runs down the drain pipes and fills up these two tanks. So when it comes to the summer months, we have a problem where everyone starts running out of water and you've got to order the water truck in to come and deliver the water. And it all happens at the same time. So everyone's trying to get water. And if you don't order water in time, you're in trouble. So this seemed like a great problem that needed to be solved with my home assistant. So you can go out and you can buy a really expensive system, get it installed by someone, and it'll do all of this thing for you. But being a tinkerer, I wanted to do it myself and I wanted to integrate it, more importantly, into my home assistant as another sensor that I can now control, manage and automate reminders and alerts to let me know how much water I'm using, when I need to order water and um, otherwise conserve it or what's the best way to actually manage this. So what I did was, first of all, consider what are the options for doing this? So there are a couple of ideas. Um, first one is a lot of the systems that work on those two little sonic sensors, um, basically sending out a sonic sensor, a signal or a wave down into the water and then measuring the time for it to come back and using that to calculate the level of the water in the tank. And that seems to be a um, relatively inexpensive way of doing it. Not quite sure, I'm assuming it's reasonably active, uh, accurate. Uh, the problem I think is with the, um, because it's a very wet environment, is the, the long-term durability of that sensor. So um, I have played around a little bit with the um, Sonic sensors. I bought a 37 in one kit and I've played around with them. They look pretty cool and I'm looking for a solution to use those in. But what I came across is this type of a pressure transducer sensor um, that you stick into the tank and basically the pressure um, reads a what sort of pressure it is at the bottom of the tank and that then creates a signal in the form of a voltage back up the wire which i can then use to monitor the level in the tank so these sensors um, i'll put a link in the description below to where you can buy them um, they're reasonably um, inexpensive, I think somewhere around 70 New Zealand dollars, uh, made out of stainless steel. So they look really, really durable. Um, I've had mine in there for almost a year. Um, as you can see in the video that we are show it off, basically it's, um, it looks in perfect condition. It's got a little bit of dirt on it, maybe give it a bit of a wash, make sure there's no um, dirt, dirt stuck in the little holes that where the water goes in and out. But Yep, looks absolutely perfect after almost a year's worth of usage. So I think it's a very durable way of doing it and uh, quite accurate. So I ordered one of these and um, obviously waited for it to come. And the next question was, how can I actually transmit this signal information back to my home assistant? Bearing in mind that it's probably about 30 to 40 meters away from my Wi-Fi router inside the house. So I first of all tried out an ESP32, linked it up and it really seemed to be struggling to connect. So um, I ruled that one out. Uh, but I've come across a device called the Shelly Uni. Um, I'm a big fan of the Shelly devices. Um, they connect locally to your network, so local communication um, with the home assistant and uh, very little downtime. I haven't had any problems with my Shelleys. Once they're connected, they're absolutely rock solid. So I came across this device called a Shelly Uni, and it doesn't have a little box or anything, just a um, just the board and the wires sticking out of the board. So um, a little bit fragile, obviously needs to have some sort of box to enclose it and protect it. 
Uh, one thing is that the, the board itself is coated in this um, watertight, some sort of a, um, a, some sort of a coating that they've sprayed on there to make sure that it doesn't get affected by moisture. So um, came across the Shelly Uni. Shelly Uni is awesome. Um, it offers a voltage analog to digital converter. Um, it offers a um, two input binary sensors, two output binary switches, and a um, it can, you can have up to three sensors on there. So like three temperature sensors or a temperature humidity sensor running on like a DH22. Currently I've got a Dallas temperature sensor running there but it's, it's a cool device because it offers you the opportunity to do so many things with it. And it has a little wire sticking out of it, which is the antenna, which I thought might be giving a better range. So um, I've installed it using that and the range is working absolutely awesome. Um, getting basically no outages on that system. Um, when it came to considering the, um, the pressure sensors, a couple of options. And um, the first thing you need to make sure that it's a voltage output. You get an amperage, a milliamp output, and a voltage. The voltage is the easiest one to integrate into the Shelly. So um, I first went for a one to five volt. Uh, in hindsight, I would have probably gone to a one to 10 volt because it's gonna give me a little bit more granularity when it comes to actually reading the sensor data. Um, so I would go for a one to 10 volt. Um, you need to also select the level that it's going to send. So my tanks, are, I've never been in them, but I think they're about two to three meters worth of water. So um, I think the current one I've got is five meters, um, but ideally try and get one as high a voltage as possible and as um, close to the level of the water that you're going to measure so that you get that, um, uh, that accuracy. Uh, thirdly, it'll give you a cable length so you can select how many meters you need the cable to run. Um, it seems they offer quite long cables, so you can actually run it quite a distance. Um, for powering the sensor, um, luckily we've got a tank, um, we've got the pump house right next to the tanks, and that's got a 220 volt plug in it. So that was awesome. So what I've done is got a 12 volt um, power supply, plug that into the pump, and I've then got that running along to my Shelly Uni, supplying the 12 volts um, into the positive and negative supply. These two 22,000 litre tanks. As you can see, it's been raining quite a lot now that it's winter, so they're both pretty full. And this is the pump box over here. And what I've installed here is a 12 volt power adapter, and that is powering that Shelly Uni. And connected to the Shelly Uni, we have this pressure sensing device so that just gets lowered down to the bottom of the tank and effectively reads the pressure of the water in the tank and as the pressure goes as the level of the water goes down pressure reduces and this produces a voltage currently between approximately 0 and 1.5 volts pushes that through back to the Shelly and the Shelly then transmits that back to my router and that goes into home assistant where I can read it as a gauge and effectively run any automations that I want based off of that. So let's see how we're going to connect this all up. So we've got our sensor. There's three wires coming out of there, a positive, a negative and a voltage output. And then we've got our Shelly Uni here. So I've got a 12 volt power supply. Um, and I'm going to use that to supply energy to both of these two devices. So with the Shelly, it's really easy. We have a positive and negative input, um, pins number one and two, and then we have a zero to 30 volts DC input line over there. So all we have to do is connect the two wires from the power supply, positive and negative to positive, negative on the Shelly, positive, negative on the, um, the sensor, and then we need the sensor cable, the output of the voltage to come into pin number three on the Shelly unit here. And that is as easy as it is. So literally we connect up those wires, we plug it in, we throw the, um, the device into the water tank, and we then obviously pair our Shelly up with the Shelly app. So get the Shelly pairing going, and we then go along and just add that as a um, an integration into Home Assistant. So Home Assistant has a 
a Shelly integration built into it. We just add that as an integration into the um, Home Assistant, and then I just create that as a gauge on my dash dashboard, which then reads, based on the voltage, how much water I've got left in my tank. Now in the future, it'll be really cool to create some great automations about this. So we could start measuring how much water we were actually using. Um, we could then um, do some estimations and calculations based on that on how long the water is going to last. Uh, what could be even cooler is if we're possibly able to pull in some rain forecast data over the future. Um, and then that would actually be able to calculate how much longer we've got to go on the tank and give us an alert, say a week in advance or so, if we need to order that water truck. So I look forward to creating some more videos looking at integrations around this device. But in the meantime, it's a really easy, very simple project. And feel free, give me some feedback. Let me know what you thought of this video and let me know what videos you might like me to create in the future because that's what this channel's all about is creating content that'll be useful for you. The other thing is I'd love to interview you. If you've got a home automation system running, um, let's set up an interview so we can discuss what you're doing in your project. Awesome. Have a great day and a week. See you then. Bye.